just know that when you're connecting with soul, the messages aren't likely to be grandiose, right? They're not always going to be deep, meaningful messages, but they will all have meaning. So if you're going to connect with your North Self and you want to use this process, there are a couple exercises that I suggest. Hi, I'm Vicki Baird, and I have created my successful business by helping other people become successful in their own lives. This podcast, Intuition, Your Success Compass, is the tool you've been looking for to find your due north. We all have a soul and we all have an internal knowing. And in this podcast, you will learn to combine what your soul knows, your human self's brilliant intelligence, and the connection to the desire to live a life that is fully successful in whatever that definition is for you. Sound good? Good. Now let's get to it. Hi. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. A couple episodes back, I was talking about how I use the system of the compass of the directions, north, south, west, east, in order to help me create a framework of coaching, but also to make it a little bit easier for my clients to understand where they are um, and how they can shift and move to a place of self-surety, spiritual connection, joy of being human, and how this uh, ends up leading to success. Because if we're too all over the place and pulled in so many different directions, which is actually where this came from, because I'm like, wow, people are really pulled in so many different directions, and yet they feel a desire to focus, and there's a lack of focus because we're pulled in too many different directions. It came about because I was trying to interrupt that cycle. I was trying to interrupt the, I don't have time for me because I have to do this, 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 and this. And to make it a little bit simpler to understand just how vitally important it is for each of us to spend time with ourselves, to understand who we are, to listen to our soul, and then apply that to the human element so that both can combine and we can have this ridiculously joyful experience as I feel like it was meant to be and not as difficult or contemptuous or or just um, the cluster that sometimes human life ends up being. And it doesn't have to. So what I want to talk about today and we're gonna, what I'm going to cover is the North. Because the North to me has always been my soul connection. And I feel like it has less to do with what we've been taught about direction and more to do with where my magnet goes. So I am someone who ends up connecting primarily through my energy body, through my intuitive senses. That's my wiring. I often joke that I just did some uh, homework in past lives, which is what I'm teaching now, and that I continue to learn myself. And this north is my soul connection. And it would be the same for you. So if you wanted to follow this process, you don't have to. You have free will. So the north to me is my soul. It's my life force. It's my eternity. It's also my guiding light. Um, it's my believe in me when my human self doesn't believe in me. It's my uh, appreciation of all sentient beings, of all things with life force, which is everything, all things with vibration. And it's a place that truthfully keeps me on the straight and narrow. And I don't mean that to be like total rule follower, but it helps me when I will bail on Vicky, like when I feel like ah, it's okay. I just won't do that thing today. I won't eat well. I won't go for my walk. Oh, who needs that much water anyway? I'm sure I got enough yesterday. Fun fact, your body gets used to it. So even if you 
got enough yesterday. <laughs> it like resets while you're sleeping, I think, and says, yeah, we still need those hundred ounces. And the idea of having this soul connection for me and this knowing of having this soul connection, I will bail on me. I won't bail on my soul. And I don't, it's not a guilt relationship. It's much the same relationship I have with Justin, a personal trainer, right? When I was going more regularly, because I lived closer, uh, I often felt like, nah, I don't need to go today. I don't have to do that. And that's the unsupportive side of the ego, right? It's all of us have it. And it's okay, especially if you understand it, it's okay, because then you can start to dialogue with it. And I always said to myself, I will not bail on him. I promised I'd be there. I already paid for the session. I may as well go. All these things to inspire me to get there. Well, I use the same premise with myself, like with my soul. If I feel like uh, I don't want to get ahead of these podcasts and feel that relaxation because who would want to feel relaxation, right? All the things we do as humans. Uh, I will think, no, you promised that you would put one out a week and you've never missed a week. And you do this because the intention of integrity is really important to me, the value, and it helps me to show up. It helps me to take time for myself, to breathe, to journal, to all the things that are seemingly about the human process, but they're really about my connection to my intuitive gifts. Because if I don't nourish that, you know, I'm I'm, I'm sure I would find something to do. But I feel like it would be like losing my essence and that's just not okay with me. So the North and my soul helps me to show up in my humanness, which then supports my soul in its decision to pick this human in order to walk around in in this lifetime and to experience life. So your soul chose you to come into in this lifetime and It's okay not knowing. How do I say this? It's okay if you don't know or didn't know up until now that you have this soul essence. That's fine. Your soul doesn't take it personally. It does not have an ego. It does not think, geez, I picked a real slacker here. It thinks, oh, I am so excited about when she or he or they connect in with me. I'm so excited. I'll just hang out here. It's fine. I'm sure in every other lifetime, we've gotten to know each other. Um, In this lifetime, I'm sure it will happen. So the North, the idea, and I feel like this is somewhat where do North comes from. Like you'll hear the phrase, what's your do North? And as in what's your direction? What's your trueness? What's your essence? It's your soul. And your soul repeats, comes back in each lifetime into a new human and into uh, an expanded version, hopefully, and then gets to do this all over again. It gets really excited about it. So the idea of having a direction for me was very powerful because it took that ambiguity out of it. And the spinning, you know how sometimes When there's a lot to decide on, you actually do nothing or you avoid or you shut down um, or you engage in um, like activities that take you so far away from being present that making a decision isn't even possible. Well, the idea of having this direction of soul can help when that starts to happen. So when you find yourself avoiding that uh, that to-da list that you created for success for you for the next three months or the email that you have to send um, or the time in meditation or the connecting with nature, having this North concept and having this concept of you as a walking around compass is something that can take the stinking thinking out of it And it can take the avoidant and the procrastination out of things. You have to practice it. I mean, then none of this is a magic wand where and decided for you, we come in with choice. Everything we do in the day is a choice. The what I will say there is yes, it can be 
tiring when you first start to really make these conscious choices to be present and to activate soul energy in a, in a knowing way. It's already there and activated, but activate it in a knowing and a collaborative way. It can be tiring. When I'm working with someone, I'll say, you are going to get tired of yourself. Just know that ahead of time and take the breaks. Like take the break to watch. Like last time, last night, I watched a few episodes of Hometown because I just love them. I love their energy. And I had had a full day of sessions and my head was like, no more, no, no, no more. Decompress, went for my walk, made a good dinner, and then sat down and watched that. There are still times for that. There must be times for that, or grabbing a good book or chatting with a friend on the phone or being in stillness. Stillness does not necessarily mean your brain is completely quiet. It just means that you take in a deep breath. So your north as navigation, it represents the idea of setting clear intention. Like I intend to be connected with myself. It's something I do each day for myself, much like brushing my teeth. I had to learn how to do it and now I'm learning how to do it and now I'm present. And it will help you to understand who you are in this humanness, but also understand what you came into this lifetime with. Like literally, what are your gifts? What is the value that you have? Not by what you do, but because you are a brilliant blink of light, right? So each lifetime really does feel like a blink of light to your soul. So the more present you can be and the more connected you can be, and with this understanding that I'm not just putting in my time and passing through this existence, I want it to matter. Um, so the North gives us that feeling of eternal power that you can then harness in this physical self. What it needs is nourishment. And the idea of nourishment will be different for each one of us. You may like to get in the kitchen and make amazing meals and nourish yourself that way. Fantastic. Uh, you may like to take your journal and sit somewhere quiet and write through your thought process and your emotions and all of that. Again, brilliant. You may do all of these things. You may get on your bike and go for a decompression ride at the end of the day. And there's nourishment. Most of the time, I find people are actually engaging in activities that connect to their soul. They're just not naming it because they don't have the concept or uh, they think it's like a mundane task and that's not nourishment. So for myself, dishes have to be done at the end of the night and laundry must be caught up. It's the way I nourish my soul. Because if that's not done, I feel ungrounded. And then I feel like I can't connect with my soul self. I can't take that next level of relaxation and dropping into spirit and being fully present if those things are not complete. And I have learned over the years to honor that within myself and to see it as something as a, a, a taking care of self and nourishing my connection to my soul. My soul does not care that the dishes aren't done, but my whole essence does. And since my soul is connected to my whole essence and is a major part of my whole essence, I think it's kind of like a recycling symbol. And if I take care of those things that help my energy field feel great, well, then I will also have more space for self-reflection. I will have that conversation with my own inner guidance that helps me to support all the other directions that I will talk about in subsequent episodes. So when you're in the North, most of the practices are going to be with the intention of connection and navigation. Where what is in my highest interest? Now, this is maybe also where you engage in some practices that help you see 
where you're going, help you to connect with that precognitive or to that clairvoyant um, or claircognizant or clairaudient or any of your other brilliant abilities. It, it will help you to have the idea that I must connect in order to have these downloads, right? And so in order to get the pings from the universe, I have to do my part and you have to do your part. So you may use the North connection. You may use Oracle cards. You may use a pendulum. You may use uh, the I Ching. You may use your own body for connection. But the idea of the connecting first will be, I'm going to the north. I'm heading there. Isn't it always nice to know where you're going, at least a rough estimate? I'm okay with a fairly flexible day of, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm sure it will be revealed or I'll take steps in order to meet the outcome that I would like to experience. But our system calms down when it knows that there's an intention set or a direction set. So the spiritual practices that you hear a lot about and then maybe you've tapped into and stopped doing and then went back in and stopped doing. I hear this a lot with meditation practice. And if you've listened to this podcast for the over 215 episodes, uh, you have undoubtedly heard me say meditation happens wherever you are. You can stare out a window. You can go for a ride. You can be waiting for your kid in the pickup line. You can be sitting in meditation. You can be in lotus and receiving. You can be in shavasana. Um, you can be on your evening walk. Um, you can be singing. It happens everywhere. But with concerted effort and intention of some fort of med some fort, <laughs> you can build the fort if you want some sort of meditation and connection, because meditation just means focus. It does not mean clear your head completely of thoughts. That's not likely. Um, it just means focus. I'm going to focus on where I am right now. So I'm focusing on northern direction. I'm focusing on my soul, giving me the information that it has available to it from all the lifetimes that it's lived and I'm focusing on receiving that. And I have to do my part in order to do that. So this is a, um, a statement you could say to yourself. I'm doing my part so that my soul knows that I am wide open to the reception of any deeper understanding that it may have about um, where I might feel lined up, where I may feel, feel more joyous, and also where my like logistical direction in life is heading. People often think that intuitive um, messages are of this higher ilk and oh so divine, um, but they're usually pretty fundamentally simple because we make things too hard as humans. And it's often the simple that brings the joy. And it may be that you're in meditation. And you hear, you know, you forgot to get tomatoes. And you're like, I did. And we were going to have BLTs tonight. Guess what I had for dinner last night? If you have not tried, if you're vegetarian, just a side note here, and you are vegan and you have not tried my bacon, it's not available everywhere, but oh my goodness, it is made from mushrooms. So if you're allergic, like Ashley, you don't eat those. Um, but um, it is so, so good. And it fills my soul, I will even say. So last night I had BLTs. But if I didn't have a tomato, we'd have BL, right? And you just adjust. But sitting in meditation, knowing that I was intending to have BLTs last night, I heard you forgot to get tomatoes. And then, of course, because I'm planting seedlings and the tomatoes are starting to pop up and everything, I'm like, Oh, I planted tomatoes. I planted three different varieties. And I'm like, oh, 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 for the BLT tonight, you're absolutely correct. So run up to the store. Now, it may not be about that tomato. It may be about the connection I made with someone in the store last night that when I came home, I'm like, that made my day. That just capped off a perfectly lovely day, sent it over the top, 
of how nice people are um, when you're walking around with nice energy as well. So just know that when you're connecting with soul, the messages aren't likely to be grandiose, right? They're not going to be about, let me change that. They're not always going to be deep, meaningful messages, but they will all have meaning. (laughs) So if you're going to connect with your North Self and you want to use this process, there are a couple exercises that I suggest. You can always go check out uh, some of the worksheet bundles that are on the website, vickybear.com. And because all of the stuff that I develop, there's a little hidden intention in there. It's not going to be hidden anymore if I tell you about it, but that's okay, Uh, of helping you to connect with your soul. And there may be an interest, say you have an interest interest in anxiety be gone, or at least quiet down for a little bit. Say you have an interest in that. Well, that would be your soul guiding you to that. Maybe your head is thinking, I just want to calm down a little bit. I want to feel some peace. And your soul's like, here, go do some of these exercises. And you actually have to do the exercises. But so everything that I create always has all directions and consideration, but most especially connecting with your soul. Um, because when that's there, there's a surety within self that we are transitional here. We are not here for the long haul. Like every one of us is going to croak at some point. And the sooner you realize that, the sooner you can really love life because you start to appreciate the fact that you might not come home tonight, like, but you may be going home, like you may croak. And if that is the case, how do you want to be in every day? Do you want to be worrying about all the things that you spent today listing that didn't go well? Or do you want to know, I did as best as I could with what I had in the day. And that's, I think, all we can ask of ourselves with an occasional sprinkle of, ooh, I rock. So in the North direction, here are some exercises that you can do aside from spending the moment, um, spending some time in focused meditation, intentional meditation, um, connecting with self, whatever you want to call it. Just spend some time quiet, okay? No phone no electronics, uh, nothing playing. Just listen. Just listen to the sounds that are around you, and that can help you to focus too. So along the lines, you always hear me say, take a walk in nature. Some people have reflected back to me that that's not going to happen, Vicky. I don't like it. Okay, fine. What do you like? What is your equivalent of my being so deep in the woods, I'm a little concerned. I don't know how to get out. Um, What is that equivalent? And figure that out and spend some time each week, at least. I'm not saying this has to be a daily event, but each week. And when you do this, thoroughly connect with, I am in my north. I freaking rock. I am doing this. Look at me navigate and meeting up with my soul. It may. That might be a pottery class. It may be that you volunteer to pick up trash on the side of the road. Um, it may be that you found a rock somewhere to sit on and to stare at the vista. Um, whatever works for you, playing an instrument, you know you. You'll figure it out. Repotting plants. Oh my goodness, that's so grounding. Um, which would also be the South, but helps to nourish the north right runs in that pole so when you're i'm going to encourage though when you go out for a walk because you must move your body um we are not meant to be those rocks move your body in some way um pay attention to the signs the symbols that are around you your soul will communicate with you through nature it will give you messages um uh, a couple of my friends are uh, heart finders, right? Like when they go out in nature, the, the hearts just appear, a wet place on the road or um, a rock that looks like a heart. Uh, another one has 
hers are stars. So those are, I think, like GPS points asking you to connect. So maybe you go for a walk and you say, for every rabbit I see, I will tune into my north. You know, for every, well, if I said pine tree, I'd be like being, being, being north all the time because I'm surrounded by them. But for every, if you're walking in the city, for every red car that goes by me, I'm going to take a breath and I'm going to say, hello, north. I am tapping into you. I am conscious of you. Over time, you won't have to do this. It's just initially making that handshake and then eventually a hug uh, with your soul. So look for the signs. Look for the messages. Now, here's my caveat. Not everything is a sign. Not every cardinal is a dead person sending a message to you. There are just cardinals sometimes. Not every sign that you've associated with a loved one is your loved one visiting because that would be pretty self-centered to think that that was the case when they are doing their own process. However, something shows up, draws your attention, and you know it's not typically where you would see one or you weren't even in that place of, I need a sign, I need a sign, I need a sign, then yeah, take that as your message. But what I also want you to do is look for the messages that are connecting to your soul. So when I go for a walk, sometimes I listen to a podcast or a book or music, but for every walk, I will turn it off for at least one mile. And that's my quiet defragging. But also I want to hear what's coming in. And oftentimes I have really, I receive really good guidance and ideas during that time because It's like setting an appointment um, with your spirit guides and with your solar angel and with ascended masters. It's like, oh, she's going for a walk. We know at least one mile um, there'll be an opportunity. And I, I feel like they wait and then just drop it in. So then take the time to reflect on whatever that is. Now, I will say, If you're receiving, if you're out for a walk or you're receiving somewhere, say you're on a drive and we've all done it, right? We've been in that meditative place, arrived somewhere and been like, oh, did I get here? But if you have a drop-in, when you have that drop-in, write it down because it will be difficult to get later. One of the tricky parts of soul communication is that it will come through your human self. Sometimes it just gets misplaced. Um, I know that it always follows, like it always comes back around, but you might have wanted it right then. What you heard was touching um, or directive and you want to take action on it. And I've done this. I've gotten back to the house and been like, Saca de mundo. Um, what was it that I just heard? And then I just asked my guides. I'm like, you're going to have to bring that around on repeat. Um, because I did not get it. Okay. So I firmly believe in writing, journaling, uh, morning pages, gratitude journal, something that connects you physically. Because again, following up on what I just said, oftentimes the information will come through. And if not captured, it makes it incredibly challenging to go get it again. And like this morning when I was writing, I was writing about, oh, some poor food choices I made yesterday after a commitment to only eat those. Well, not only, but to focus on those things that have a high vibration. Listen, it tasted really good. But I was writing about that and asking myself, OK, why did I do it yesterday? Why was I unable to stop? What was I fulfilling that wasn't already fulfilled? Why was I eating absently? Because I was eating in front of the TV, and that's one of my try not tos. All of those questions, I started writing that, and then it ended up being this like love bomb. I ended up writing how much I love vegetables and fruit, how much I am grateful and appreciative for the fact that I can buy vegetables and fruit. And how much I am grateful to my parents in that there were always vegetables with a meal and that they taught me from a very young age that vegetables are good with our garden and everything. 
Um, and then it, I ended up listing, I don't know how many, but there had to be over 60 things that I love. And I ended up on such a high frequency at the end of that, that I was like, okay, this is the reminder of when I said I wanted to eat high frequency. It's because I don't want to keep going down so far and, and smashing. So that journaling, that writing, if I had not had that today, I don't know that I would have had that awareness because the practice of it, and I don't judge what comes out of my pen, I just let it flow. It helps me. And I know it would help you. And you can ask if you're in, if you're journaling, writing, whatever you want to call it. For years, I resisted calling it journaling because I just wasn't committed to the practice. And it was my way of, I don't know, denying my own joy, but it was my block. And then once I moved that block, it, it's one of, it's something I look forward to. It actually gets me up in the morning because I do it first thing. So you can, Right. Well, what is it that I need to know in this moment? Or what kind of impact do I want to make in this world? Um, what is my direction for this week? You know, don't get too big. So when you're doing this, it can give you the ideas, but it will also spark off the synchronistic events that will help you to then manifest and to have that connection with your soul, but it will also connect to the human element in front of you, right? So we are here to embrace soul and human self. Ignoring one or the other is not smart. So if you are not there yet, like you, you don't want to do the journaling, how about a scratch? You know, I always have a little notebook next to my right hand side no matter where i'm sitting there's a notebook there for something that drops in so you could do it that way as well right and that would be connecting to your soul and you would write down any insights any inspirations any message that comes through because inspiration is not only breath it's in spirit so you're writing in the spirit of supporting yourself you could do a vision board. This is a physical activity, but it's asking of you to dream. It's asking of you to look for navigation. It's asking of you to go beyond what is in your physical awareness in this moment and be open to the brilliance that's available to you. Okay. We do have to allow in, we do have to receive. So, you could do the vision board and use images or quotes or pictures that actually create spirit in you, that create in, and inspire and you motivate. Motivation is often like the cracking thing, like I have to get that done, people are coming over or something like that. I prefer to operate from a place of inspiration because I feel like that brings the life force energy through you. You could connect with a mentor or a spiritual advisor who could help you learn how to be more in cohesiveness with your soul energy. You could learn how to do some energy work. You could enter into therapy to clear some of the clutter that's in your physical experience, in your brain and everything, in your emotions to then open up the space to connect with your soul. And sometimes that does take a guide. When I'm working with people, uh, one of my questions to them is, okay, what's your preferred language around uh, spiritual work, around self-connection, around the divine? What's your language so that I can respect it? Everything that is involved in Vicky Baird coaching is about you knowing yourself so well, and that includes your soul. So working with a mentor or a coach or a guide, clergy, somebody can help you deepen the understanding of the soul's journey and give support when 
sometimes it feels like the soul is growing and expanding so wildly that the human self is a little freaked out. When people say they're overwhelmed, I mean, we'll talk about the practical stuff, uh, what's causing overwhelmment. But most of the time I have found it's that your soul has expanded and your human self is just not allowing yourself to show up there. It's just not going there, right? That's where the connection is extremely helpful because you can develop a humor around that. Like I have said to my soul, did anyone check in with Vicky and ask if she wants to go say this thing out in public or if she wants to go in this direction in her business? And of course they did because I trust my soul to always serve me in the highest, even when my chicken shit human self might be like, I don't think that's a good idea. So if you think navigation, if you think about putting in the coordinates when you're driving somewhere and how it's, there might be a detour, right? There might be a need to recalculate. There may be that you saw a road that looks so inviting that you ignore the person talking to you through your GPS device and you take that and then you get the recalculating or it tells you to take a U-turn. It just happened this morning when I was looking for a sanctuary around here that I'd heard about to hike. <laughs> it's, it's like, you need to do a U-turn. It was right. So that's going to happen for you too. There will be times where the information you receive is not necessarily the next step on your soul's journey, okay? So you may be getting a hit for something a few years down the line. And it's important to be grounded enough to be able to say, hmm, that feels like it might be coming to me so that I can do these other steps to get ready for it. So with my husband's passing, I saw that three years before he passed. And even though there were events where he almost croaked, he chose, his soul chose to come back through again. Well, not to come back through, to come back to his physical body for a little extension there, which I'm grateful he did. Uh, but that knowing, knowing deep inside me that he was going to pass before I was 47, and indeed I was 46, that helped me prepare. It helped me work on our relationship. It helped me become more independent in myself and less guarded in myself. It helped me be more vulnerable because I was like, Whoops, if this is a short timeline, um, I want to show up in my best, which helped me develop the process of showing up in my most aligned self for what I could do at that time. It's not. There is no perfection. It does not exist. So you may get some hits from your soul that are, in fact, further in time because the soul doesn't have a Gregorian calendar. It doesn't have a 24-7. Um, it just knows that it wants to have so much thinking fun while it's here that sometimes it sends the previews before it even makes sense. So do not discount. This does not make sense. There are many people that I have read for that have come back to say what you said make no sense at all. And it's now happening. And it's like, yeah, of course. But that is because we have to do our own work. Like we have to do some of the preemptive work. And sometimes we're just not in charge of the delivery. So this idea of giving yourself some help in determining what direction you would like to head is both fundamental in the human level and without limits on the soul level. But both will help you. They will both, the idea of it will help navigate, help you navigate um, as long as you nourish it, as long as you take care of it. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me, um, schedule an appointment, or uh, reach out, and I'll help in the best that I can help to use my navigational systems to help your navigational system uh, come on board. And until then, I share this episode with someone who may 
uh, benefit from it, leave a review. Please leave a review. That helps a lot when it comes to the podcast being found by others. Um, and it's just so fun to read. Um, or like it, subscribe, um, and share it on social media. So I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you listening. And I will see you in the next episode when we are going to talk about the South. Thank you for listening to this episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. I appreciate you being here. If you would like more information about developing your intuitive skills, removing those blocks, and creating the life that feels the most successful to you, then head on over to VickiBaird.com. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D.com. And check out the courses, the groups, and the Spaces app that will allow you to be part of our community and know about upcoming events and specials. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next episode.